Hello and welcome to the Medic's Guide. Today we're going to cover Liddle Syndrome. So grab your pen and paper and let's get started. Now Liddle Syndrome is sometimes referred to as pseudo hyperaldosteronism, but it's got nothing to do with aldosterone. So let's delve into that first. What actually is Liddle Syndrome? So this is a cell in the kidney in the distal convoluted tubule. And in this cell we have a sodium channel and a sodium potassium pump. Now in conditions like hyperaldosteronism, Aldosterone over here binds to the mineralocorticoid receptor, which then activates these sodium channels. S sodium then goes in, gets reabsorbed, and as a consequence, potassium goes the other way and gets excreted. Now that we understand that, in Liddle syndrome, there is actually a mutation to this particular sodium channel, and it's actually a gain in function mutation, which means that the sodium channel is activated without the effect of aldosterone. So as a result, you get the influx of sodium, which then gets reabsorbed and potassium, which is excreted, which is exactly what you would see in hyperaldosterone, hyperaldosteronism, sorry, hence the name pseudo hyperaldosteronism. Now the symptoms are very similar in these two conditions and we get hypertension, hypokalemia and metabolic alkalosis. Now, as I've written, conventional hypertension medications aren't helpful because they don't alter that particular sodium channel. So we need to look at the mechanisms of some of these alternate medications. So let's go back to this diagram. There's two examples, there's spironolactone and there's amyloride. Now, spironolactone actually works on this mineralocorticoid receptor. But in Liddle syndrome, this isn't going to change anything because we know that aldosterone plays no part. However, a myeloride actually works on this sodium channel, and that's the sodium channel that's mutated, which is why it's used in Liddle syndrome. Apart from that, having a low sodium diet is key in managing the hypertension. Now, when I think of Liddle syndrome, I always think of the supermarket Liddle, which is a grocery store, and it usually has cheaper products, so I always shop there. And there's no shame in going to Lidl. So, this is what I want you guys to remember. Let's break down this word shame. Sodium channel, hypokalemia, amyloride, mutation, and early onset hypertension. Remember that there's no shame in going to Lidl, and you'll remember everything that you need to know for this condition. Let's finish off with a couple questions. What is the inheritance pattern of Lidl syndrome? Well, I didn't mention this before, but it's autosomal dominant. And lastly, a three-year-old boy is brought to the paediatrician for wellness visit. The mother reports that he has been significant. He has been sleeping and feeding well. She does not have any active concerns. Family history is significant for hypertension. His blood pressure is 140 over 90. Lab testing is significant for hyperkalemia and metabolic alkalosis. What is the most likely condition associated, associated with these findings? So we've got a young child who's got a significant family history of hypertension with a very high blood pressure of 140 of 90 and also has hyperkalemia and metabolic alkalosis. So you could argue that this could also be hyperaldosteronism or Con syndrome or even adrenal hyperplasia. But because of that significant family history, we should lean towards Liddle syndrome. And that's the answer for this question. Anyway, that's all we're covering today. Very quick video, just covering briefly what Little Syndrome is. Thank you very much for listening. Please like, comment and subscribe. Let me know if you want me to cover any other specific conditions in the comments below. And I'll be back with another video soon.